Welcome to the Vintage Gaming Review Podcast. Join host Dave, Matt, and Zap as they journey back to the golden age of gaming. Get ready for a nostalgia-packed ride through classic games and unforgettable memories. Tune in and relive the excitement of retro gaming. Hello, I, I, I don't know what to say on this. This is a whole, I guess, retro game. This guy said it all. Retro gaming video review awesome sauce in the old dirty basement yeah vintage gaming review yeah it's i don't know the more i think about this i think this is just going to be a trip down memory lane for everybody like i'm not going to go i'm not going to say particular video games and walk you and yeah yeah how are we through I, it. how are we I, I agree with zap like or what are we re- reviewing are we actually reviewing like certain games like contra well, or are we going like to, like pong this is just more of a concept of we talk a lot about video games obviously in our age range we are Video games were a huge part of growing up. Mm-hmm. Um, I have a lot of people that reach out, like when we talk about a game or a specific system, like, oh, remember this, remember that. I just thought it'd be a fun little side episode to try to, uh, you know, talk about more in-depth systems and games and who knows what it'll turn into. Who knows? You don't even know. Yeah, we're, don't we're even going know. Down, yeah, we're going down a path less traveled right now. Right. So we're going to have a guest caller in uh, later on, Shibe. He's a fan of the show and uh you know him and zap have a lot in common with yeah. the, the commodore which we'll get into but uh so i guess like zap kind of mentioned maybe we'll start off with like what was your first system that you remember either being introduced to or using yeah i guess i'll start it off for me it was the atari 2600 for sure and mm-hmm. uh you know mm-hmm. i was really young at the time i have an older brother and uh that was my first introduction to video games yep and uh, obviously that came with like, you know, what was it, combat okay. it shipped with? That's right. <laughs> so uh, that was like my first intro to gaming. How about you guys? Um, I know Zap probably, he he's pretty good with all this. Um, my first introduction to the whole computer scene, the gaming thing was at the Colonel's house. And I must have been, shoot, like nine, ten. And he had this game that we talked about. It was the one you said with Martin Short. He had, there was this movie and you were like injected with this guy who had to get to like your heart or whatever mm-hmm. to stop like these infections from like getting you. But it was a whole game and Zap said it was on the Atari 2600. I thought it was on the computer. So there was a game for the 2600. It was called Fantastic Voyage. Yes, yes. And the game, that, that game was exactly what you're explaining where it's just a small, a microscopic little dude mm-hmm. that goes through. I and mean, this was a, I think a movie way back in the day if not a book like old in, in, old interspace interstellar well, inter- so the, inner space inner space that was the one with uh dennis quaid though. i was wrong on that yeah yeah oh yeah. dennis quaid yes so yeah, this yeah. goes this again just is the, the the concept of these little people floating through the body and you're shooting little viruses and little shit as you're floating yeah, in, a, in a little ship so my first system like you dave was the 2600 uh however friends of mine at the time had either a coleco vision or an intellivision Mm. so those I'm, I'm pretty sure like all three of those came out right around the same time yeah they were pretty damn close to one another um it, yeah and so on the atari i mean christ i know i just wanted to jot down some games that i know that i played the shit out of like i played obviously like anyone you're gonna swap and play a bunch of them like you know your popeyes your dig dugs your donkey kongs you name it but i mean games that i played for hours and hours and days and days on end included Pac-Man, Pitfall, Pitfall 2, Moon Patrol, Yars Revenge, Kool-Aid Man, <laughs> Mega Mania, and Piece of Cake. So, I just remember Pitfall really, Pit, really Pitfall. well. Pitfall, the one that I really loved. So with the Atari, you could get, you'd have your regular joystick and then you'd have the dial style joystick. The paddles. Uh, like the, the paddles. paddles. Yep. And it would spin and there was a game called Kaboom. Yeah. And uh, he would drop bombs and you had to like go back and forth. I remember playing that. And then there was a game, I think it was called like Drag Strip. It was like a racing game that I have early memories of. Obviously, Pac Man was a huge release. I remember being so excited for Pac Man. Oh, it's going to look like the arcade. Did not look like the arcade. What a tragic, (laughs) tragic disappointment Pac Man was on the Atari 2600. But I still played the shit out of that game. But see, that's what I think of gaming that really got me like turned on to gaming or into it was being a young kid and going to the mall, the Harrisburg East mall, which was around with my pap. And they had a small little arcade in there. Mm-hmm. And I just remember like, it, it was weird. Cause like you think of, you see some of the movies, like I remember like 
like dudes in jean shorts. They look like old guys, like sitting in there, like playing like pinball machines, oh, very yeah. serious about it. Or you would see people lined up to play Pac-Man, what Galaga, like mm -hmm. games like that. And I, that's what I really remember from, from growing up until I got my first system, but I don't think it was as exciting because you're talking like a TV, like we have sitting there. Yeah. Little tube. Television. Yeah. Little, yeah. little tube televisions. And it, I had a very small TV and it was very hard to play games on that. Cause I couldn't half the time it would go out. Cause I didn't have the connection right in the back. Uh, yeah. Cause I think it was my grandfather's old television. So I didn't have like very good experiences at first with home gaming. I just liked going to the, uh, the actual, you know, going to the mall to play games. You had the little RF module or whatever. I forget yeah, we what it's could called. switch it. It's like two wires and then it goes on and it plugs into the coax jack. It, well, it, you had a coax, but at the coax. time it was the coaxial or whatever. It was those, those two hooks that would, I think, connect to your VHS. No, v, v, VHF. VHF yeah, on the, the back. To the back with two two screws. Yep. Right. And mm -hmm. you'd switch it from yep. game to whatever, mm -hmm. game to TV. Game. I mean, so I only grew up with one, I mean, early, early, I only had, there was only one television in the house. So you used, oh, so you had a nicer TV. Well, yeah. no, there was one television. So I had to beg, borrow, and plead with my parents. Like, could you please let me play these video games, please? While you, instead of watching your shows tonight or doing whatever, could you just either sit here and watch me or let me do this or, you know, go do something else? It was a challenge. I had to go up to friends of mine's houses to play games. To that point, Zap, talking about parents at the time. So I remember with the, with the Atari, like my parents had no interest at all. Now we'll get into this as we go along, I'm sure, but it wasn't until the N Nintendo mm. that my dad, for instance, showed any interest in mm -hmm. gaming. Like, mm -hmm. but my parents would be in and out of the room and not even like they would take a glance at it, but it was never like, Oh, let me try or anything like that. Sure. Like it wasn't until the Nintendo and duck hunt in particular, but we'll get to that. But yeah, it was definitely like we had uh, the one TV in the living room. I had an older brother and, you know, if there was a, uh, if Dallas was coming on or whatever, you know, a, a TV show right and on. my parents needed a TV were kicked off. So I think our, our generation is like that also. Like, are any of you guys into Minecraft or anything like, you know, those kind of games that kids are playing today? I mean, Call of Duty, I still play. Um, okay. And my son play, they will play that together. But those games like that, like Minecraft and all that, he, he's into them. And uh, what was the other Fortnite? Fortnite, yeah. yeah People never, are buying skins. I've, I've tried it, but it's it's a little bit too much for me. Don't get me wrong, Call of Duty's a little more in depth than the games we play growing sure. up. Sure, but I enjoy it. I ever since they started, at least for me, when I'm talking about the massive multiplayer online games, I got I want nothing at all to do with them. Like Agreed. nothing at all. Agreed. I just play the the campaign mode if there's anything nowadays, but. Yeah, I, I don't, it's weird to me playing with strangers because I know they're 12 year olds and 11 year olds and they're going to kick my ass. Oh yeah. But being, <laughs> being from the eighties to being now to 2024, I think all people that have played video games are agreed when you are sitting there, like sometimes up until three, four in the morning trying to get past like a certain. Sure. Yeah. That, that was some, that's something that I really look back to as a kid where you're like, shit, I'm beating this tonight. Mm -hmm. I got this tonight. You go get like snacks. You're in your room, closing the door. You're like, I got this, and just playing for hours and hours on end. Then you finally get past a certain point. You're like, oh, I'm gonna play a little bit longer. It, 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 that, that's one thing that really brings me back to video gaming. That that's something that I liked about it. I don't remember on the Atari like the concept of trying to conquer a game. It wasn't until Nintendo that I remember leaving my Nintendo on or you know things like that. Sure, I was obviously a little bit older as well mm -hmm. when Nintendo came out, but. Uh, the Atari was more just pick up and play for an hour yep. and, uh, you know, there was, along. to my knowledge, there was one game for the Atari that you, that was played like that, that to, to truly conquer it. And that was adventure adventure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. The, and I referenced earlier, combat was the one that would ship with it. Correct. Yep. Yeah. Cause I always get those two confused. Adventure had like the key and, uh, there was like a key. On yeah. You're screen. just this little block moving around and, oh, and, and move, going through labyrinths of castles and forests and whatever that not to like. be confused with zelda yeah, which will come later which will i'm sure <laughs> get to. so well, tw yeah so 2600 was in vogue for the longest time and as time went on i mean you know new technology is just going to become available so i guess the next in line which is what what is it everybody what is it <laughs> what everybody would have gotten not everybody but obviously the vast majority would have been the nes yeah. Uh -huh. Now I got. I was late to the game on NES. Oh uh, yeah. See, I was too. I mean, I wouldn't say late to the game, but a friend of mine had it. Uh, another friend, Matt, growing up, and I remember going to his house playing Kung Fu. Oh, you know, that game was great. Yeah, and I was like, man, this is like the greatest thing ever. Look at the graphics, and it was within like 
maybe a year or six months that I ended up getting it for Christmas or whatever. So friend of, friends of mine that with whom I grew up, they had gotten, instead of an NES, long before they had gotten a Commodore 64 computer. And the Commodore 64 was an incredible, incredible piece of technology for, for, for kids to the extent that, I mean, they had a shit ton of software, but at one point, 60, 70% of that software was, was games. Mm -hmm. And I had to sell this to my, my parents. So they didn't have NESs, but there, there came this one Christmas where the choice was either an NES or a Commodore. Mm. And I had said, and I had was pushing and pushing and pushing for a Commodore just because one guy across the street had one. And then another guy up the street and up a hill had one. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted these things so badly. So my sell to them for that Commodore was, look, I understand that the keyboard costs this and the disc drive costs this and the monitor costs this. But and this is the, like 10. Mm -hmm. uh, you'll save money because the games are free. Oh, the, were they the were games free? are free? free. Well, because the... All of the virtually all of the games that would have ever come out for Commodore ended up getting or they were called they were cracked or hacked like you would be able to copy these games. These were these games were purchased on floppy disks, right? Oh, I got you. So there was copyright protection on there that prevented one from from copying and giving it away. However, with the right hacker or cracker <laughs> Damn. <laughs> to crack those codes. Well, no, that Damn, means cracker? These, yeah. these these games were considered cracked. And so th once they were able to get past that copyright, then you could copy it and pass it along to the masses. Mm. And so this would just exchange. This was like herpes. It would just As soon as you touch someone, <laughs> they, they, they would have it. it. But then they get it. And then somebody else gets it. And then somebody else gets it. Man, like, wrap that shit up. You just keep, everyone just kept swapping games and discs with one another like forever like you know shy for example mm -hmm. like i would just i remember going to school with him and just seeing him the one day and we were talking about it, like all right man well i'll bring in some discs for you and you bring in some discs for me and then we'll, we'll swap them and then you would copy them onto blank discs like memorex like specifically made like burning cds kind of like just like burning cds except mm -hmm. it's on a, a five and a half inch I'm sorry, five and a quarter inch floppy disk. For for those listening, Memorex was actually a huge um, where you would have a tape. Oh yeah, is it is it live or yes. is it Memorex? Remember the guy sitting in the couch? That was huge. That when was we were a growing cool up. cool picture. Mm -hmm. I had friends that had Commodores, but majority of like of well, I should say majority of them, the two that stand out in my memory, their parents worked in that field, mm -hmm. so they had like home computers. Whoa. And I remember as a young kid, like. I, like I go over to a friend's house and turn on a Nintendo and start it right up if I'd never done it before. Right. But for the the computer gaming consoles, now I don't know if there was another one other than a Commodore, maybe that the one kid had, but they had to walk me through like how to get to the game. It's you not something to, that you could just go in. You and, had to load the game into the system memory of the computer and then play the game after it had loaded. Right. It wasn't direct connect with a with a cartridge that's feeding right off of that. Speaking of Shyby, we should probably give him a call here. Why don't we give him a yeah. call? Get him, get him to on chime the board in there. All right. Hey. Shyby, what's up? How you doing? All right, brother. So we're just getting into uh, talking about our first experiences with gaming consoles. Good, good morning. Good morning, Mr. Shyby. Hey, good morning, Matt. Good How morning. How are you? Pretty good. How are you doing? All right. Sounds Shyby. like you're, sounds like you're on, a, on a yacht or something. Are you? <laughs> yeah. I wish I was on a yacht. I'm sitting on a beach in Avalon. Oh, it's uh, just I'm as close. You're, cool. Yeah, you're right there. Yeah. You know, down here, uh, a lot of people waiting to get in their houses. So. Nice. So, Shyby, we were talking back and forth, and I was explaining to these guys that we're going, to, we're going through our progression of time through varying video game systems. And we had hit the crossroads. We, we'd gotten through Atari 2600. NES had come out, and then I quickly diverted and said, well, I was late to the game with the NES because I had gotten into the Commodore first. So I guess my yeah. bringing you into this, I mean, I know I remember from grade school, you and I were swapping discs, doing all kinds of stuff, and I was trying to... Uh, yeah, the, I was, yeah, that's the old stro Stroker 64 from uh, <laughs> the old Catholic school in 7th and 8th grade. That's Whoa, right. some Stroker. That was one of many. <laughs> oh, yeah. One of many yeah, countless it was on games. Yeah, disc. It was on a floppy disk back then, but you know, seventh grade, eighth grade, and uh, in Catholic school, there wasn't much floppy about it. Yeah, I think yeah. Sister Susan had a copy of that. Nice <laughs> from from my <high> school. <laughs> so, Shyby, how did you? How were you exposed to the Commodore sixty four? Like, how did you get one? What prompted you to get one? Was it a parents thing? Did your friends have one? Like, what what introduced you to that? So, from the same mentioned school that that I met John at. 
um, that, sorry. But uh, I had a friend there. We had a mutual friend, and he, he, he was big time into Commodore 64. And we actually had a bulletin board system or a BBS system back then, which was kind of like the Internet before the Internet. Uh, he had a whole setup at his house that you could call in and there was like, you could chat with each other over the computer. You could play some games. I mean, mind you, the games back then were kind of like all word games. Uh, and that, that kind of got me into it. And then I saw some of the cool games that he was playing at the time, uh, for a computer. And, so, uh, so I when, I, when you say back then, what, what year are you talking about? Is this like a late mid eighties? Mid eighties. Okay. Like eight, yeah, probably mid eighties, like, you know, between 85, 86, somewhere around there. Okay. Um, and that, and then, uh, you know, I went home and, and, you know, just like any, you know, well, well my dad was a steel worker and, uh, he was just like, whatever you're doing, you're not going to work at the mill. And then when I brought up my buddy had a computer, he's like, let's do it. You know, let's get you a computer because if we want to get you something that's going to, you know, get you new computers that were up and coming. Um, so we went out and got one and, uh, you know, the gaming, you know, I told him I was going to do programming stuff, but you know, secretly I was trying to get the games because the games were cool. <laughs> yeah. uh, and, and, uh, and that's what we got into back then. It was like, it was so advanced compared to like the consoles that were out there. You could do much more things. Graphics were better. Um, you know, it was just more dynamic. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it was, it was amazing. I, I was telling these guys, I was able to, I don't want to say swindle, but convince my parents instead of, Whenever that Christmas of '86 came around, instead of getting a an NES for which you would have to pay more, you know, pay by game, I said, "Well, look, if we the Commodore costs more between the keyboard, the disc drive, the monitor, whatever, but all of the games are free because it, at the time I had I had friends of mine who were doing the same thing. We were all just swapping games back and forth and back and copying them and copying them. Yeah, it was a lot of pirating going on, right? Uh, that that was the funny part." Uh, you know, you had your Memorex five and a quarter floppies, and then they sold a little punch thing that you could punch into them and then, uh, you know, basically burn them yeah. uh, like you do a basic CD, you well, know. You, just uh, you could do games you could do games back then. But, yeah, you know, I was reading something about that. I guess, you know, those systems were going, the disk drive, the keyboard and stuff were going for like five or 600 back then, which is equivalent to like two grand a day or 1800 or something like that. So yeah. I read that's money. Time. And, yeah. I, and, it, and, you know, what, one of the things is, is you know, some of my buddies were advanced like programmers and stuff like that back then, and they had Apple, and that's when Apples were like real big. But it was Apples were really lacking compared to the Commodore sixty four. They were. I, I think they only I think they only had like forty eight k of RAM or something, so they couldn't keep up. So would this have been the early early nineties with no. the Apple? No, the eighties. Yeah, the oh, mid eighties. Okay. Yeah, the Apple yeah. ran at the same time. It was just a competitor, not unlike a, a, an IBM, but that was truly more for the, the the programming and the computing. Now, while there certainly were games available for the Apples and the IBM compatibles, the Commodore had them way beat to market. So the Commodore was the gaming one. That was for the kids gaming. Then the Apple came, and that was more for business type. Maybe so, I mean so yeah 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 it, I th- yeah basic programming like it came with a thick book that you could do some basic programming type in some code uh, but you know the 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 real uh, workhorse there was the gaming capability yeah. because of the RAM um, you know you were able to do a lot of cool yeah. games with it now there was a, a Windows operating environment for the Commodore it was called Geos. Mm. Any, well, I'm gonna I'm just looking at Mike to see if he remembers that so I remember getting Geos as well. As, as part of this, when I would get a, when I had gotten the Commodore and it was, it wasn't necessary for me because it had things like spreadsheets and word processing and calculators and all of that shit. And no, I was just in it for the game. For the game. Yeah. yeah. Now, Shabby, was that your first gaming platform or did you have an Atari or in television or anything before that? Yeah. So I had an older brother. I have, a, I have an older brother. He's like seven years older than I am. So he was into like the Atari 2600 uh, and the Intellivision, which was huge in my family between my cousin and my, my brother. And then I got into it. And, uh, uh, so that was like the real big thing. Now, me being younger than the SNES came out, the 8 bit, and I was into that. Uh, but even today, going back at my, my age now, I'm like, I always look for the retro consoles. Uh-huh. And the one I play the most is the Intellivision. Uh, oh, really? you know, oh. What yeah. was their, what was their was big fun. games in television? Like, what, what did they have that was out there? Oh, dude, they, Dude, they had like hockey. Uh, you know, they had this hockey game that was very basic, uh, but it was hilarious. I mean, you check a guy 
and and they'd do a flip on the ice. Like they'd literally flip over. <laughs> wow. And some, sometimes you get called for a penalty and sometimes you wouldn't. And sometimes, you know, I play my brother and, and he checked me like 20 times and I get a penalty and I just you know, start screaming and yelling and stuff. But, it, you know, kind of basic stuff. But uh, he also had some like Dungeons and Dragons games. Uh, oh, cool. you know, those were big at like the, the role playing games were big at that time too. Uh, you know, but, you know, they actually had a video game for it. Uh, one was like the Treasures of Tarman, which ended up being like way ahead of its time. Like it's like, how did they get this into this little cartridge kind of thing? And I still play that like on the retro console. That's so awesome. One of the things that always, uh, yeah, one of the things that always upset me was you could not get a Commodore sixty four retro console uh, these days. I think they had one and it had like thirty crappy games on it. But then yeah, meeting up with Zappy. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, meeting up with that the other day at, at, at your place, Dave, uh, you know, he showed me the, the one console uh, that does all kind of stuff, like, you know, C64 games uh, to all kind of computer games, console games. Uh, so I had that earmarked for one of my drunk purchases. There you uh, go. When I'm, when I'm down in my basement. And Amazon late at night. At my door. <laughs> Uh, so I, do. I found yeah. a, I've since found a better one, and it's actually one that I had purchased a couple of years ago. It's so the one that I had sent to you includes a lot of console games that have since evolved with discs. So you would be able to play that that console would include I should say that that retro gaming thing that has like a hundred and some thousand games on it. That's going to include your Xbox, play, PS2, your uh, any again, anything that would have come with discs, uh, the the what's the oh, Nintendo wow. one, the the GameCube, GameCube. and thereafter. GameCube. I found one that's yeah. sm- that's smaller that basically stops right when the disc systems come out. So it has thirty some thousand games, but it's every it's every game on every console that had ever been invented up until the disc system. So I'll send that one to you. That's much cheaper. It's, I think it's like a hundred, yeah, hundred fifty bucks. Oh, that'd be perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll yeah. send that to you for sure. So, while well, before we yeah. let you go, I know you're tied up at the. I know you're tied up at the beach, but I know that you're <laughs> you're my only fellow Commodore fan here because we haven't even gotten into NES yet, and we'll we'll get to that later. The Commodore, top of your head, give me give me X number of your favorite games, and by favorite, I mean these are the games that you would have played the shit out of. Like, what did you play the most on the Commodore? Oh, uh, probably fourth and inches, the football game. Yep. Uh, Accolade. Yeah, and then there was, yeah, Accolade. They had like all kind of names on there for the players, like Tanks a Lot and stuff like that. Uh, there was Hardball. I think that was Accolade too. Sure maybe, was. Maybe not. Uh, sure was. But, uh, you know, it had like all kind of other names on there too. Like the one guy's name was Craven Moorhead. Nice. Uh, we Whoa, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, you know, uh, and then, uh, you know, like some of the Ranger games, like Airborne Ranger, uh, you know, they had the Barge Tail. Yep. Uh, I don't know if you remember that one, John. I, uh, that's but, one. Uh, I have a list of all of the games that I remember playing the shit out of. Now, this isn't even me going to look up lists of games. I didn't even bother with that because it would just go on and on. But yeah, like Maniac Airborne Mansion. So for, things, here so. they go. Yep. Airborne Ranger, you said made, that made my list. Barge Tail made my list. Uh, Maniac Mansion is second to the top. Like I played the crap out of Maniac Mansion. Yeah, it was funny because I did Google like the top games for Commodore sixty four just to see what Google would say. And the first one was like Bubble Bobble, <laughs> and I was like, yeah, that one was fun, but man, it wasn't like Strip Poker or Stroker sixty four. Right, right. <laughs> uh, you know, we, we were at the bottom of the barrel for that one. So I can uh, I, I, I can't it, imagine it, why. It, yeah, <laughs> no, but it's. It's kind of funny, but I'll put that uh, that console on my uh, on my 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 drunk drunk buying budget. Nice. Uh, I think the, yeah, the last time I did that, uh, I was down in the basement. It was, I, I take a lot of time off at the end of the year, and uh, a couple of days later, something showed up at my front door, and here it was a Vietnam helmet, uh, you know, army helmet. Wow. Uh, apparently, I ordered it. I ordered it while I was down there drinking, and I took it over and showed my dad and his buddies that were drafted. And they're like, "Oh, the old piss pot," you know, kind of thing. You're all putting it on, so. Uh, that's you know, awesome. I think I think I'll I think I'll tag this on on top of that. But nice. Um, Fourth, Fourth and inches. inches. When you yeah. said that, that unlocked a memory for me. That's one of the football games I remember playing at that friend's house. Yeah, that was on the Commodore. Yeah, yeah. And the graphics, like you said, were were much better than what I was seeing, like on the Nintendo at the time. For sure. Like that. For sure. Yeah. It, it, it is funny because my uncle that lived next to us, just like any place in Skilton, your family like all lived on one block, yep. right? Uh, we lived right next to my uncle and my grandmother and he was, you know, he's years older than me and he's a pro, uh, got into programming at the company I work for now. And he got one of the newer IBMs like late in the game, uh, I know, kind of like late eighties, nineties. 
and uh, he had the game Leisure Suit Larry. Yep. I don't know if Zap, yep. you guys know that one. I've never, never heard, never heard of one. that. I definitely know that one. And then when I got a hold of that one, I was like, oh, man, the Commodore's dead. I was like, you know, <laughs> yeah. and, and Commodore, Commodore never kept up. But, uh, you know, and then they kind of fell off after that because then that's when the gaming systems took off. And uh, that was the end of that. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah, but fond memories, man. Commodore and you know, meeting Zap back in grade school in that little <laughs> uh, Catholic school in Fielton. So. Yeah, man. We, I mean, I was telling these guys, I remember just walking in and you and I were just swapping boxes of discs over and over again. I mean, it's, that's just how it worked back then. All of yeah, the, dude, like 50, like 50 games and yeah. we just take them home and burn them and hand them right back. Yep. It was like insane. It, yeah. you know? it was incredible. Absolutely incredible. See, if I would have known about yeah. all that, I probably would have went that route. If I would have known yeah, to do I, that. I had, I had no idea. Like my, my parents weren't very advanced. No, mine weren't either. So, um. Yeah, my my dad. I ended up working where he worked, so he didn't really push me like you. Mm. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> but it's like you're working no, where I'm working, little... buddy. Yeah. Uh, see, yeah you ain't Matt, getting out Matt, of here. That happened, yeah, that happened to, to my brother and I. Uh, you know, growing up in Steelton, my dad was our only income in the steel mill, and that's when it was declining. And he's like, you know, whatever you do, you're not working where I work. You're right. going to go to college. You're going to do it because it was all mill families, right? Generation after yeah. generation. So yes. Still in George wanted me to stay close to home. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I tell my wife and my son, because my son's and you know, Dave's son and my son are buddies and they're getting into colleges and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I said, you know, I was 17 years old. And my dad was just like, I don't know what you're doing. You're just going to college, figure it out. So I was like 17 years old and showing up at like, for SARS office and administration office. And are like, where's your parents? I'm like, they're at home where my dad's working. You know? <laughs> so it's a, but it was just, it was hammered into my brother and I said, you know, that we were just not going to go into the middle. Well, that's a, yeah, my, my, was, my pap, all my, my uh, uncles. Yeah. They all, they all, walk, they all worked at the mill. So. Yeah. It, it was a good Same job, year, man. man. When, when it, when it was jumping, Steelton was, that was big business, man. When it, you're, you're exactly right. I mean, you look at pictures of Stilton like back in the fifties and stuff, there's like boulevards and trees and it's beautiful. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. You're right. The mill was, the mill was cranking and that's where my grandfather was and my dad's and my uncles and stuff. So except for my one uncle that I mentioned, that had the IBM and got into uh, college, but uh, yeah, I mean, we tried to break the cycle and my dad was just like, you're going to figure it out. You just, you know, kick me out, <laughs> like, go do it. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no computers in our household. I no. just, yeah. Stayed in the system. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Me yeah. Neither. <laughs> but yeah, Shabby, that was awesome, man. I appreciate it. Zab, you got uh, no, yeah, man. Shabby, yeah. stuff. Shabby, thanks so much, man. I mean, I'd love to go through a list of games here, but we're already r- pumping on time here. So, uh, dude, thanks yeah, again, I'm man. Good, yeah. I will, uh, I'll talk yeah, to you honor- soon and I'll send that link to you for that, for that thing. I, I appreciate it. I appreciate uh, being on the on the call too with you guys. I really like your show. Awesome, man! Thank we, you. We we want to definitely like I was telling you yesterday. We're, we'll hopefully maybe do another one of these, and uh, hopefully you won't be on vacation. You can come down here and chill with us. It'd be be a good one. So awesome, man! Well, hey, enjoy. Shy, always always on vacation. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. See, that's when you work on computers, right, man. You got it. Yeah, like you, that. Got, you got See? time like that. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> hey, man! We appreciate it. Thanks, right, gentlemen. You have a good day. Thanks, right, man. You too, you brother. Too. Yep. Later. Later. So I don't want to dwell too much longer on the Commodore 64, but I do want to just run through a quick list of names. So for anybody listening that dug on the Commodore, mm-hmm. here it was. My just these are games that I played the living shit out of, and I mean forever. Just would not stop. Number one for damn sure was Wasteland, Maniac Mansion, Summer Games, Winter Games, California Games, World Games, Jeep Command, Defender of the Crown. Ghostbusters, Aztec Challenge, Realm of Impossibility, Russian Attack, also known as Green Beret, Three Stooges, Ultima, Three Stooges. <laughs> Mail Order Monsters, Pirates, Bard's Tale, Bruce Lee, Way of the Exploding Fist, Airborne Ranger, Test Drive, Spy vs. Spy, and Karatika. Wow, a lot of those I do know from Nintendo. So they must have like been cross platform or ones that. Spy vs. Spy they, was Nintendo, wasn't it? That and uh, like Russian Attack, obviously. Yep. So I wonder if they were. Were they Commodore games first? Or how would that work, like, for the Commodore? Would they hit console first or vice versa? It was, they would port these games, if a manufacturer or whomever came out with a game, they would make it come out as quickly as possible simultaneously across platforms. Like, I remember shopping for some of these computer games or looking at them at the store Mm -hmm. and seeing, oh, well, this is available for both the Commodore and the IBM and the Apple. And then if if it's a name like Taito or Acclaim or... 
God, what's the ones that make the up, up, down, down? The Konami. Counter, Konami. That was, they would try to port that. Kona, oh, Konami. yeah, Konami games. They yeah. would port that from, from console to console and computer to computer because, like, if you write the game, you want to have it available to as many people as possible. Mm. Konami so was Contra, that. right? Yeah, Contra, sure yeah, Konami. And they did a lot of good sports games. Yeah, they did. We'll get into. So I mentioned I was late to the game with NES, and that is because I went Commodore first, but... There were games that were ported to the Commodore that were like Nintendo. They would, let's say, start as Nintendo games. Mm -hmm. So like your Castlevania or your Super Mario Brothers or whatever. They would make that version for the Commodore, but it just wasn't as good as Nintendo. So years later, a couple of years later, I ended up buying a used one. And I guess this is, since you guys had skipped the Commodore, now we're all in, in NES land at this point. So this is all, this is still pre-high school for damn sure. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah, way before. Just uh, look at some consoles back through time. I have some here with their release date and sales date. So the first like kind of major console that would hit the market was the Magnavox Odyssey. That was 1972. Mm, nope, yeah. don't know that one. That was yeah. before our time. They sold about 350,000 units of that. And some notable games on there was Simon Says and Table Tennis. There was a Commodore PET. Sure. Pet, 1977. Yep. That was an early home computer. Notable games, Adventureland. And 1978 Star Trek, the Atari 2600, like Matt and I had, and you had as well as yep. that. 1977. How many units do you think they they sold? Want to take a guess? The Atari. Yeah. I'll say five million. What do you think, Matt? Uh, seven million. Thirty million units. God damn. Yeah. Space Invaders. That was a juicy squeeze. Juicy, big time yeah. Space, yeah. Yeah. squeeze. Space Invaders sold two million copies. Uh, Pac Man Adventure. Pitfall. So what, what what year was that that came out? 70 what? 77. Okay. So I might have got one like 85, 86? For the Atari? Yeah. Oh, no. I was earlier, probably like 82 maybe. Yeah. Oh, I, yeah. I want to no. say I got the 2600, probably around 82. I was later in the game than that. So the Apple II computer, 1977, 5 million uh, units sold. Then we get to the uh, NES. In 83, it was released in Japan under a name called the Famicom. Yep. And uh, it was... Uh, you know, very, very popular, obviously, over in Japan. Yeah, the Japanese, they're, they're ahead of the time on the games, mm -hmm. man. 85, we saw it here. Uh, 61.9 million units sold. So that's quite a bit. The Commodore, 82. And that was uh, between 12 and a half and 17 million units sold. Now, there was a, uh, like, a video game crash in, like, 83. Yeah. And that's where people with the consoles felt kind of like the games weren't as good you know there they was kind of like a backlash they yeah. were so that crash if i recall correctly they were putting out just a shit ton of shit games yeah there was no nintendo seal of quality they were they were <laughs> that's right they were putting out these crap games and it was awful and i think atari is 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 actually partly to blame for this i think the uh et debacle yes either led to it or, or was just a, a, a at the happening at the same time et wasn't that bad of a game man you didn't think so I remember playing it. I remember enjoying it. You remember yeah. thinking it was like, whoop, 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 whoop. Yeah. <laughs> like he'd fall into the yeah. pit. The, yeah. You have to raise his head up and yeah. he'd fly. I enjoyed uh, I don't think ET e was that bad. I just remember being very, uh, very frustrated with it. So uh, they said that that game kind of helped push him over the edge. There were other games that were kind of shitty. And there was really no, like, I guess anybody can make a game for the Atari. I don't know if there was no licensing. Right. I don't really know how right. that worked. But there was a lot of bad games. If you went out and bought one, spent money on it. A lot of times it was uh, didn't live up to the, the hype, hype, the cover, yeah. and everything else like that. So that puts us, like I said, back to you know eighty five. So that's where we get to the NES. Like like Dave and, said, in eighty, when you looked at the cover of a game, it wasn't exactly what you were playing. Not it at all. It was a lot different. So I found this out about the Nintendo since we're about to get into that. Yeah. Um. So the Nintendo, if you notice, loads differently for the games than like an Atari is like a top load. He right. said load. Load. Okay. So the Nintendo, when they developed it, obviously they call it the Nintendo Entertainment System because they didn't want to call it a gaming system mm. because of the stigma mm. uh, from, you know, earlier with the Atari. And also they wanted to load like in a VCR because VCRs were popular at the time uh, and home movies and all that. So they're like, oh, if we if we market this like as an entertainment You're system. You're saying that's like a side load, not a front load or a top load? Well, the top load was the Atari, the Intel, all these ones that came before uh, but with the Nintendo, they wanted to make it a little different. This is mm -hmm. not a gaming console. It's an enter entertainment system. Sure. So people, that stigma wasn't And they attached. made it look like a, v, uh, a VCR. Yeah, basically. 
So that puts us there at 85, and that's when the Nintendo came out. And this is the big one. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, this was everybody's big one. I mean, yeah. When you hear 60-some million copy or 60-some million units are sold on this, that's a, that's a big deal. Uh, again, I was late to the game with the NES, but that's because I had spent a few years with Commodore in between and kept up with both. Mm-hmm. I had this awesome system at one point where, and I guess we'll get into it, but I mean, the I had a Commodore set up and the Nintendo set up, and then I also had a Sega Master System. Oh, the original. Set up. I had all three connected to the back of this monitor. I could just switch between all three at any one time. So that was pretty baller at the time, man. But NES, man. I mean, what what were you guys when you guys were playing NES? Give me your your top games, and I'm I'm saying the games that you just played the hell out of. Oh, um, Contra, Mike Tyson's Punch Out, mm, good ones. Um, shoot, like well, I, I can't even think off the top of my head. Go ahead, Dave. Well, what, what was mean? your first with the Nintendo? Did you do you? Did well, there you, was like Duck Hunt, all like well, all the ones that remember, came with Super Mario Brothers, Donkey Kong. Do you remember getting the console? Like when it? Yes, was? I got it for Christmas. And did you had you played it somewhere else before that? Or? Yes, uh, down I had a I had a rich neighbor Matt that his dad was like a, one of the head guys in Hershey. Ah, uh, it was okay. a few houses down, but he had everything before it like before it hit the market. Yeah, yeah, he was like the first kid like had a tree house when tree he had like a trampoline <laughs> before trampoline. I didn't even know what those were. So awesome. He was ahead like, of the they, curve. Yeah. So that was like I had mentioned earlier, my first one was with my buddy Matt, and I remember Kung Fu was the game that like we loved it. We would play, and then Super Mario. And then Zap, you 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 said that uh, you had the Commodore, but what was your first that you memory of Nintendo? I should say. So Nintendo, my first memories of Nintendo was playing at other people's houses, and the the very first I remember Gyromite. Oh, that's Ooh. when you that's when you bought that the one. Nintendo that came with yeah, the, it came with the yep. Robbie the Robot. Oh yes, yes, mm-hmm. I forgot what that was called, but yeah. I know what you're, exactly what you're talking. So about. So Gyromite was the one where that little robot would control the the sliding up and down of the of basically like ceiling doors that you could. Mm-hmm further progress or or had to regress back through this maze, Mm. this side view maze. But I mean, by the time I got to Nintendo, which is, I I bought a used one years later after having had the Commodore. I mean, games that I remember playing the just beating the shit out of them. Super Mario brothers two disliked by many Mm -hmm. non canical from, from many perspective. But I think that's just, I think that's the best one. Dragon warrior played the hell out of that. Castlevania three. Castlevania was a great one. Oh, Shoot, great. I forgot about that. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Good. Not the not the arcade version, mm-hmm. but but this was just a single player mm-hmm. side scrolling game. It was awesome. Tetris. I mean, yeah, Tetris for Christ's sake. Oh, we didn't even mention that. Yeah. Tetris was yeah, bananas. Mm-hmm. Uh, with Tetris, you had Doctor Mario. Uh, let's see. I didn't play Zelda one, but I played the shit out of Zelda two. I remember Zelda. Yeah, Zelda right. was fun. That was the first like trying to get somewhere game. Like, was it, Zelda really? was the first save game where you had a battery built into the oh nice the pack, mm-hmm. and and it's because it was such a vast world you were at the time. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Uh, oh, then there was uh, Metroid. Great game. Loved Metroid, and that was a code based one where you your your save game was basically a code they would give you at the end of whenever you wanted to save your game or you died or some shit. They would give you a. A like code, a, key a code. twenty digit key code to play. Mm-hmm. What else did I have here? Uh, Mega Man Three, Batman. The now the Batman was based on the Michael Keaton. Yes. Movie. The, mm-hmm. Yep. It wasn't cartoony or whatever. It was the it was the dark Dark Knight. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Willow, Adventure Island. I mean, that's about it, really. This again. These are just, oh, Bubble Bobble. I know Shivey mentioned that for the Commodore. I played the shit out of Bubble Bobble for the NES. Mm. That's I, where it I, is. I liked all the uh, the sports games. Like uh, we talked about Konami, mm-hmm. and I believe they were the ones behind like Double Dribble. Yeah, Blade, Double Dribble, Double Dribble, yeah. Blades of Steel. Uh, probably that was a great game. That Blades was a great game. Was good. It yeah. was a very good game. What was the one with? Or that was later the later Nintendo system where you like always check Gretz, Gretzky. <laughs> Oh, uh, was that NHL? Yeah, and that, well, that I forget on which one Gen- it was. Might have been on the Genesis. The... Where he like was ninety nine for the uh, Kings. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. But the uh, sports games were good. Uh, RBI Baseball, Bases Loaded. Bases Loaded um, was fun. The original baseball that like the Nintendo version, uh, that one you know was kind of archaic looking compared to some of the other games that came out. There was a game called I think Baseball Stars that had a save feature or a battery as well. I think hmm. that was the one where you could actually. I mean, at the time, this is mind blowing. If my if my memory served me correct, you would actually get players and develop them in salary caps and all kinds. Yeah, of, to have all that in in a cartridge based game was like insane. That was a real thing, man, for sure. Can't believe we, d- we didn't even mention what the Nintendo was like the. 
uh, blowing it. <laughs> yeah, and then getting get alcohol, blowing. rubbing alcohol with uh, Q-tips mm-hmm. inside when the game wouldn't respond. Yeah. So uh, a good memory, a great memory I have uh, was going down to 7-Eleven and renting games uh, oh. for the Nintendo. Yeah, oh. that and, was the thing. Uh, and yeah, Tech Mobile, I remember renting that. And it was hard to rent because it was a popular game. Sure. And that was a game I went right out and bought. Tech Mobile, the original one, was insane. insane. Probably still my top it's three. It's uh, Bo Jackson and Marcus Allen in the backfield yep. for the Raiders. Eric Dickerson uh, yeah. for the Colts. It was like uh, definitely top three games for me from Nintendo that I enjoyed. Zelda, like I said, I played. Mm-hmm. Um, I wasn't a huge Zelda fan. I, I definitely like the sports games. Metroid. Like we mentioned, yep. was a good one. Blaster Master. Nice. Uh, there was one I forgot about that I was looking through this list. Bionic Commando. Do you Bionic guys remember Command. that? Mm-hmm. He had the extended. He had the extended arm. Oh, the arm. Like, yeah. Doc yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a cool game. Mike Tyson's Punch Out. There, there, yeah, yeah, that's, that's that was huge. Nailed it. Yeah, Punch Out. I remember. Uh, I had a, a neighborhood kid who had uh, his mom. Actually, had uh, <laughs> his mom. His mom. His mom's good looking. She had nice. a younger boyfriend that was like in his twenties. And I remember Punch Out came out, and I remember thinking like, "There's no way anybody can get all the way through the Tyson and like win." And this guy, he was like probably like 23, 24 years old. Mm-hmm. We'd go over there and watch. He'd play. He could beat Tyson. And after seeing this guy do it, I was like, "It is possible. You yeah. can do it." I ended up doing it myself. Yeah, yeah. Uh, be- beating the game, getting through Super Macho Man. I yeah. think was the guy, and then and then Tyson. Did you have to look up any clues from Nintendo Power? No. <laughs> yeah, that was another. Uh, Wasn't there a the, magazine? Yeah. The, the magazines and stuff were big then too, like the anything Nintendo gaming P- systems. Yeah. Yeah, there was a Nintendo Power. Did you know there was a thing before that? The first iteration was called Nintendo Fan Club. I did not know that. So, with the early cartridges, they would ship. You, there would be like a like a little mailer in there. You can mail away for free and join Nintendo fun club. And they would send you packets in the mail Mm. with little cheat codes, cheat codes, articles. And they also said they had a phone number on there and you could call Tyrone. Yeah. Call Tyrone. 1-900-909 Nintendo. If you were stuck at a part of a game, like you would call this hotline. And I think Nintendo's in Washington, Redmond, Washington. Is that right? Yep. And uh, they said the phone lines were blowing up. That's amazing. That's when people used to work phone lines. Yeah. It's like not a thing anymore. That's awesome. So when they would release a game, like right after Christmas, their phone lines would go nuts because kids would get stuck and call these hotlines. And that's when they got the idea of what you're talking about, Nintendo Power. Let's put out a magazine yeah. and these kids will eat it up. Yeah. Did you cats see 8-Bit Christmas yet? Yes. yes. I like that movie. Amazing movie. That, this just reminds me of everything we're talking about right now. So as I'm working through my timeline, I will say... 85 86 it was 86 i had gotten the commodore 88 maybe i had gotten the nintendo and then at the end of eighth grade in 90 i had befriended this new this new kid that just came into school in eighth grade he had a sega master system so the sega master system was awesome because the controllers, so you had the, the, the pad controllers versus a joystick like with a commodore right mm-hmm. so you had the, the same look and feel of the basically the the nintendo controllers was the same for the sega master system but they had the nine pin configuration connector that so those those controllers actually then worked backwards on my commodore so now i was able to play using that that nice new Mm. new development this breakthrough development in joysticks this now this gaming pad this where you're using your thumbs instead of your hand right and now i'm able to play that on the comp use those on the commodore but the sega master system i thought was great because it came with like Sega had a, a decent library, like a really decent library of, of games. Like I remember uh, Fantasy Star, like that was the their big installment into role-playing games for, for Sega. Uh, Herzog's Way, Golden Axe, Altered Beast, Rastan, Outrun, Space Harrier. Like these were a lot of upright cabinets that you would find at your arcades. Right. That Sega were- was a little blue guy. Yeah, Sonic. 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 Yeah, yeah, Sonic was huge. I think, yeah, did Sonic come out with the Master? Did it? Did Genesis. It, Genesis, that was Genesis. Oh, okay. I never played the Mega, uh, the Master System, actually. Mm. I've only ever played the Genesis on up in the Saturn. And, and Is that where it started like getting, like, the people started going, like, Nintendo, Sega, like it was, like, a thing? Mm-hmm. Sure. Which, yeah. The Genesis, was. A, I think that might have been the first 16-bit system yeah. to market. Mm. The, the Genesis, and uh, did it come out simultaneously with the Nintendo, I'm sorry, the Super Nintendo? I think, I don't know. I think Super Nintendo was late, and TurboGrafx sixteen, oh, which is a whole nother thing, yeah. actually came out a year late. Mm. So it was it was actually developed a year earlier, but didn't hit North America till a year later. And by that time, Genesis had like a large. 
So you're saying for graphics, like I remember like the 8-bit was big, then the 16-bit. What is What are like the uh, platforms now, like the PlayStations and... Oh my God! I like thirty six or forty eight. Oh, or... They got to be well beyond. Really? They're not I, measuring in bits anymore. I, I can't oh, okay. Even, I can't even imagine. And that's a good point, Matt. So think about we're what? How many years in the video game history? Well, yeah, we're twenty twenty four back from seventy two or whatever you had there. Or... And look where we've come. <laughs> yeah, you're <laughs> so, watching movies on yes, video games yes. now, right? So who you know just to think like by the time we're you know twenty years from now, where we'll be. I just can't imagine. I don't even know what you would put the number on, like a PS5. Well, they they keep on trying to push the uh, VR, the VR, which uh, my kid picked up the one a couple of years back, and it the Mega Quest or whatever it was, but um, it wasn't that great. Like you really couldn't find that many great games for it. Mm-hmm. There was the one like you were like flying like the Star Wars ship. That was awesome. The VR, yeah, the VR. But it it's it's a, uh, I don't know. They keep pushing it and pushing it, but I don't see it catching on. Do you know what I mean? Right. I think it will. I think it's it's got to get to a point where it's less, uh, like, because you got to wear all that shit. Yeah. And mm-hmm. it's, uh, I mean, you you definitely forget for me. My son has the Meta Quest or whatever yeah, I think it's that's, called. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, don't get me wrong. I feel like my dad probably felt when he played Duck Hunt. Yeah. My dad couldn't give a shit about a video game until I had Duck Hunt. He's like, oh, just pick this gun up and shoot. That's all you got to do. Yeah. And he was like, oh, this is awesome. And that's kind of how I felt with the VR. Mm. And I put that on. I'm like, this is actually in like something new and innovative, and it's different. They have like a boxing thing that's kind of cool in that too. And like, it's a workout. <laughs> yes, it's a workout. But the um, yeah, the graphics and stuff. I don't think are where. I don't know what you expect from that so far. Eventually, it'll get to a point where you won't be able to distinguish. Yep. Because you'll you'll have things connect. They'll actually probably wire into your junk <laughs> in oh, everything hey now. You know? possibly and uh this is where you get to the point where maybe people won't be leaving their house so you're yeah you're gonna gain a lot of weight work from home mm-hmm. um just eat and sleep pretty much yeah so dave when you got into sega genesis what were your games for the genesis what did you like so obviously it's shipped with uh sonic well actually no i'm sorry when i first got it it's shipped with altered beast yep which was like a cool game mm-hmm. uh the sports games again on sega genesis they had uh that, that was the first time that i played madden um which was like blew my mind sure. i remember like madden games mm-hmm. i was i was much into the sports games i'm not a hockey fan but i loved the nhl hockey games on there um i'm trying to think like adventure game wise i had like the, that whole olympics one <laughs> Yeah. On Sega, it was kind of cool. I mean, the Genesis was an awesome console, sure in, was. in my opinion. Um, I remember I had a Nintendo, and when I went to buy the Genesis, it was um, it was in between like a, a, another Nintendo, like with some accessories, or and I went Genesis, and I'm glad I did. Although I did have the, uh, the I think now I'm confused on when I got exact because I remember getting a Nintendo with a power pad. And all that stuff as okay. well. And uh-huh. I don't remember what time. But the graphic difference, the graphics from the Nintendo to the Sega were like a big jump. Sure. Could have yeah. been the N64. You might have gone from, from what's it called, the N64. Well, my last Nintendo console before I got a Wii, however many years later, was the Nintendo Entertainment. I never got the N64. It, so I no never got Super NES, no N64. No mm. Super Nintendo. I went all Sega from there on out until a PlayStation and, okay. and so on. But Genesis, now that you brought that up, Game wise, like I know the sports games were big, and uh, like Altered Beast. I'm trying to think of um, any of the adventure games or anything. I can't. Nothing really stands out. Mm. All so, right. I think since Nintendo, when I was I had Nintendo and that was it. I didn't really get into gaming that much. Uh, that's I didn't I have no ch- no Xbox, no PlayStation until like recently, as my my son was getting older, like he was getting into it. Mm-hmm. That's where we got the, like the PlayStation, and so you took a break and you came back. Yeah, I. I but even the games today, like they're kind of, they're, they're too much. It's just, uh, yeah, it's overkill. Yeah, it's, 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 it's a lot. <laughs> After the Master System, I went to a Sega Genesis, then I got a Super NES, then I got an IBM compatible computer. By by now, I'm getting into college. PC uh, gaming okay, and stuff yes, and all yes. that. But yeah. I, I wasn't connected. Like, I wasn't playing online gaming with PCs. This is, you're talking 1994 here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, latter half of 94. So I would play on there. Even then, I would, they re released Wasteland. So I played that. And another game, Doom 2. Oh, yeah, Doom. I remember that was a game that intrigued me. Talking about the Genesis, I was in my teens by then, and I was more into the sports games. I don't know if you remember this, Matt. John, I don't know if you hung out with this guy, but a guy, Sean, we graduated with. He, we'd hang in his basement. Stuff. Of course. We'd have people over. And I remember going over there for, like, Madden tournaments. Yeah. Like, where we would hang out there all day mm-hmm. and play, like, it would have been the maybe, like, Madden 94 or something yeah. like that. 
And uh, that was before, obviously, online gaming. But you, we'd go over there and make little, like, brackets, and you're playing this guy and this and that, and yeah. you play and, and, and do that kind of stuff. But for as far as, like, the online gaming and all that, the computer gaming that was to come, I would have never even thought that would have been possible. But uh, by that time, as a teenager, like, I think for gaming, I was doing so much other stuff. I didn't yeah. really have time. That's the thing. Once I got to college, I... I, I didn't play much games at all. Like I could think of two games that I played mm-hmm. while I was in college. Otherwise I was working and going to college. Didn't have time for them. Yeah. Now later on then, you know, that PlayStation and all that, I, like maybe we'll save that for another episode, but I mm-hmm. definitely got into that. Yeah. I, I We, we could definitely cut this one off. Cause I mean, the, once you get into PlayStation, anything thereafter, like it's, yeah, we're moving ahead. <laughs> yeah. we're, we're moving away from vintage to crazy now time. I mean, there's stuff that I didn't even get into that we could have talked about, but, I think this was a fun episode. Sure. I mean, the power glove. Do you guys remember that? I just um, knew that from 8-Bit. I don't really remember that I at had, all. I had one. Oh, nice. I, I, it sucked. It didn't do anything. It was horrible. But I had a. there was a whole story about that. I might as well just talk about it real quick before we mm-hmm. wrap it up. Oh, so the power ahead, glove, this guy developed it. He has. He was actually, uh, I think he went to MIT. And the, the, the initial glove that he made had like fiber optics in it. And the cost would have been like $10,000. Sure. So they're not going to be able to market this. And there was no way to get the price down. So they cut corners, huh? They, they had to cut corners. <laughs> yeah. Atari approached them. This is this was out in the early 80s. So Atari approached them. was like, hey, we'll give you ten grand." And he was like, no, it's not enough money. Like, you know, I'll just keep developing it. Eventually, I think Mattel signed on. Uh, they did a demo for Mattel. And uh, it actually wasn't even hooked up to a console. They wanted it for Nintendo. They wanted it. He wanted to make his own console mm. and make games for this glove. But they were like, no, we want you to make it for an existing console. Nintendo's the hottest thing. So they did a demo for Mattel. And instead of hooking it up to an, a Nintendo, he had a, a, a Amiga, IBM Amiga, I think so it was called. So there was called. a Commodore Amiga. Or Commodore, I'm sorry. Yep. And they were doing this demo. And they had a kid planted in the audience and said, call him up on stage and make it look like he's just picking up the glove and playing, but it was all pre-programmed. And sure. They were so like, he knew what he was doing yeah. the whole time. And they were like, the, the CEO was like blown away. Like, oh, this is great. And then she put it on and played punch out and knocked out glass Joe on like the first punch. Nice. And she was like, this is great. Develop it. We'll pay for it. Do whatever. They cut a lot of corners and yeah, put it out. out. When I got it, I remember like the game sucked. Like you play Ninja Gaiden, try yep. to do that. It just didn't work. Nope. Yeah. The, the system I got had the, just the duck hunt with it, with the duck the zapper. Hunt yeah. Yeah. Which will not work zapper. on a will not work on newer TVs nope. like the plasmas mm-hmm. and stuff. The it zapper will, it will only work on a cathode ray tube. Cathode ray, yeah. The when, uh, uh, it's funny to mention when when you when you talk about that 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 glove. Somebody somehow since and it, it might be for Robot Chicken. It mm-hmm. might be for Robot another Chicken. show. Like he actually uses that for for still photography for the to like take for, the picture cool. for claymation. Yeah. You know when you're moving things a little bit, he uses Stop that animation. Glove to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's wild. Yeah. Power glove. Yeah, there's all, all kinds of accessories. Like that's the power of glove. <laughs> power of glove. So when you bring up that Commodore Amiga, that throws me back, too. It's, but, so there was the Commodore 64, then there was the Commodore 128, but then there was the Amiga. So the Amiga was the most advanced graphically. Yes, I mean, it man. was vivid, vivid pictures on that Amiga. Like, everybody would see that. Oh, man, it's just so cool. I want that. Never got it. Never happened. No. Me neither. They were expensive, though. No, but man, there's so much we could talk about. I mean, I enjoyed the episode. I don't know about you guys. Yeah, it's cool. It's fun. It's We're definitely fun. Dipping trip. our toes in here. Yeah. yeah. There's so many good memories about video games. And uh, definitely, if you guys enjoyed it, reach out. Let us know. Um, let us know what, what we missed, which I know was a lot. Maybe yes. we'll do another one down the road. Shoot us an email. <laughs> Why not? We'll have to figure out what the format will be when we talk about particular games. Because, I mean, you could talk about games for forever. forever. Maybe, maybe pick like two or three titles and talk about them. So. Oh, next True. time I'll bring, the, one. I'll bring my Commodore. We can hook it up to your television. Oh, sound of that must mean it's about the end yeah, of the, the episode. Yeah, the game's closing down. <laughs> well, sounds like game over, baby. <laughs> yeah, so don't forget to find us on uh, Facebook and Instagram at Old Dirty Basement. And... Uh, I guess that's it. You guys got anything else? Yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it. That was fun. Yeah. Little trips down memory lane on the videos. Good, good time. Thanks for tuning into the Vintage Gaming Review in the Old Dirty Basement. You can find us on Facebook and Instagram at Old Dirty Basement and on TikTok at Old Dirty Basement Podcast. We will catch you on the flip side.